This used to be a barren land. Without hope. Without helmets. Yet, there was a time when the helm was all that someone might want to get their hands on. An item of rarity, scarce like the knowledge of how to obtain it. For months, they struggled. Sought the helmet like hunters in the night. Hundreds of them, all working together like never seen before. But this was in the ancient days of 2016. It started in a small house in the barren wasteland we call England, deep in the town of Cambridge. A man by the name of Maud Matt Kay was sitting in his chair, reading a book entitled Mayan Prophecies. In it, the book speaks of the tomb of Palanque, where one would solve a series of clues to reveal the truth of the Mayan people. Inspiration strikes. For three weeks, he plans. He conspires. He orchestrates a devilishly fiendish puzzle, the likes of which old school has never seen before. A hunt which would forever be etched into history. A hunt whose name would send shivers down thousands of spines for years to come. On the 17th of June 2016, Maud Ronan made a post to the RuneScape forums and old school Reddit titled Crack the Clue. Inside, he posts a map, similar to the ones you find in Clue Scrolls, explaining that this would be the first of four clues. Together, they would form a fifth, extremely difficult clue. The reward for these five clues would be a brand new cosmetic set, one piece for each individual clue. However, finding the last piece was always going to be a doozy. Jagex anticipated that solving it would be quite the feat, and intended to have the first person to find it be commemorated forever in the item's description. The community bands together, but for the first three weeks, the clue fest is fairly uneventful. The maps are relatively straightforward, so it doesn't take long for people to figure out the spots to dig at. Although, while everyone is waiting for the next map to be revealed, the solutions are already in-game. Mod Matt K confirmed on the second week that, if someone somehow knew the answers, they could dig in all five spaces to receive the set right then and there. He also makes an ominous comment about yellow lines being the sunshine in the darkness of the soul. Kinda weird. I'm sure it's nothing. And on 6th of July 2016, the fourth and final map was released. Once again, pretty trivial. So all that was left was to find this fifth item and call it a day. Okay, let's look at these four maps. What are your first thoughts? Well, given how easy the others had been so far, some players initially assumed that the fifth item would just be in the middle of all the others. Draw an X between them, find it on the map, and... Nothing? Well... <laughs> Matt K did say this last one wouldn't be that easy, but it's not going to be that hard either, right? Well, when everyone's individual guesses had failed, it was time to pull together. Players congregated on Reddit to toss ideas at each other and cross off whatever they tried that had failed. And, sure enough, there were some quick developments. Turns out, if you overlap all the maps on top of each other and align the blocks around the edges, it shapes the letters 10 and 5 W. The first step towards a solution. 10 north, 5 west? That makes sense, but from where? In the summer of youth where everyone thought they had a chance at cracking the clue, there were still some splinter groups. Small groups of friends who didn't want to participate in the public discussion, believing they were going to be the ones to solve the mystery by themselves. One by one, these groups failed, and many of them ended up contributing their findings to the collective. On 7th of July, one such group of friends did exactly that on the old school subreddit, making a thread that crossed off several potential solutions from the infinitely large list, encouraging people to keep trying. They invite others to their clan chat margins to help search in-game. Several hundred comments later, and people are still no closer to figuring it out. When empirical truths dry up, people start making assumptions to try and narrow things down. Anyone can figure this out, right? So that means we can cross off any areas locked behind quests or other requirements. If we're right, then we need to dig somewhere in here. Lots of players get to digging, but this area is still very big, so nothing bites. And, heck, 
Maybe it is in a quest area. Ugh, now we're getting nowhere. With discussions scattered and the dank memers on Reddit already getting tired of this stupid cluefest being posted non-stop, 8th of July sees the discussion directed to a new subreddit, slash r cracked a clue. Here, notes can be passed more easily, with dedicated threads for ideas rather than having to dig for them in the comments of a single one. Although, maybe confining all of the clue-obsessed players into one space might not have been the best idea. Because some of the resulting theories are... <laughs> interesting. Okay, look at the outfits so far. It's clearly based on Game of Thrones. Heck, so are the examine texts. So, what areas in RuneScape are like Game of Thrones? White Wolf Mountain? Ice Mountain? Winter Todd? Well, if all you think about in Game of Thrones is the area north of the Wall, that might make sense. Actually, if we're going north of the Wall, what about the Wilderness? Put a pin in that one for now. So, the final item is called the Helm of Raidwald. Data miners found it, you can't hide anything from them. Except how to actually get the helm, it seems. The image of it is based on the design of a real helmet. A king's helmet. A king who was laid to rest in a burial mound alongside a ship. People try digging on every ship they can climb aboard on. Don't ask me how digging works in a ship. And alongside that, every single mound and graveyard is picked clean. Barrows? Checked. Nothing. Church graveyards? Pretty sacrilegious? Still nothing. Little Timmy's pet hamster who we buried in the garden last week? Sorry kiddo, gotta make sure there's no helmet down there. And with every corpse in the game dug up, we still don't have the helmet. Okay, we're missing something. Don't forget 10 and 5 W. Let's try each solution again but dig 10 steps north and 5 steps west from where we last tried. No? Still nothing? Darn. Maybe 10 north, 5 west is a red herring. Matt K might be a trickster like that. What's a less obvious possibility? Taibo 1A village. The 10th letter of that is an N, and the 5th is a W. 20 players dig up the entire town, but alas, no helmet is found in the jungle. Wait, Highway Man also fits the criteria. What if we dig on the tiles they spawn? A tile they're standing on? Maybe we need to kill them. Several hundred dead highwaymen later, there's still no helmet to be found. As you can probably tell, the players are going a bit mad, and the mods are loving it. Mod Kirin tweets about how Matt K is the only person who knows how to solve it. This is taken to be a clue for some reason, and arguments break out on the subreddit. At some point, Kirin enters Margin's clan chat to answer some questions and help the clue hunters along. Most importantly, he reveals that anyone can do the clue. So cross off those quest areas for good this time. And that there's more to it than just digging. It's hard to express just how infectious the excitement around Cracked Clue was at this stage. It was hard not to get involved. Everyone wanted their shot at the glory. Even big time streamers like Fa started to get in on the hunt. And Jmods reveled in it. Kieran reiterated the clues he had given in margins in Foss chat, spreading the hint to a much larger audience. Let's look at the maps again. There's something you probably noticed the first time round and screamed at me behind the screen for not mentioning. These little funny circles with lines through them on each map. I'm gonna call them Thetas for short, since that's what they are. If you overlap all the maps around a Thetas, you get... a bunch of fancy shapes, but nothing of note. There were a lot of theories about what you got for overlapping the Thetas, but nothing overly helpful or believable. If you've been paying attention at home, though, you might remember an early hint that shows up here. The first hint, actually. Yellow lines are the sunshine in the darkness of the soul. There are yellow lines here, but what do they mean? We're going to have to think harder about this. A few days later, Matt K confirms the clue would only take a couple minutes to solve if you knew the solution. <laughs> Cheers, Matt. Very helpful. Players were quick to note that the lines actually matched various parts of the world map. While there hadn't been any valid connection between the four maps to make sense of it, people really thought they were onto something. Now, when you think of someone overcoming an insurmountable challenge in old school RuneScape, who comes to mind? That's right. When things were looking dire in the hunt, the Juggernaut himself stepped up to the plate. Wooks was on the case. 
Wooks was convinced the lines were important, and as a legendary content creator, he was one of the high-profile streamers that JMods were tuning in to watch try cracking the clue. On his stream, Matt K soft confirmed the importance of the lines, saying that nothing on the maps were coincidental. Wooks was quickly tiring of the limitations of the human eye. He once more threw away the shackles of humanity and became a vessel for the god of gaming to play through. Rather than tick manipulation or perfect playing like he would usually utilize in his enhanced state, Wooks put his time into programming. On 31st of July, just three weeks after the final clue had been released, Wooks spent 10 hours livestreaming the development of a program that would transform the yellow lines into dots, align the circles on the clues, and then match the outlines to any successful hits on the world map. When the program was finished on the 3rd of August, the code was executed, and there was only one possible solution. The yellow lines represented a small island with some nature runes on it, deep in the wilderness. Were those Game of Thrones guys onto something? No, don't give them any credit, I'm just kidding. Now, while there were many who saw Wooks as a god gamer and a beacon of light on the community, there were also many who wished to tear him down or tarnish his reputation. Some people claimed they had found this days ago, but were downvoted for not keeping up to date with the documents. Others poo-pooed the solution, since the funny thing about this nature rune island was that there was no way to get onto it. If the helm was under the nature rune or something, then it was inaccessible to everyone, so it can't be there according to Kieran's anyone can get it. Well, Kieran once again stepped in and confirmed that the nature rune was relevant. That settles that. Wooks had made a significant step towards the final solution. We were closer than ever. But what now? It had been a productive month. Lots of progress had been made. Lots of hints had been dropped. Lots of secrets had been decoded from the four maps. But it seemed like no one knew what to do next. Days turned to weeks. Weeks turned to months. The buzz around the hunt started to die out. The bustling hive of hype faded, and hundreds of eager hunters dwindled to just a handful. With no progress and no hints, most players moved on to more exciting things. Like grinding skills for tens of hours via methods they'd already grinded for hundreds. Lots of people started to forget about the hunt completely. A few content creators like Wux and Fa still occasionally livestreamed some attempts to solve it, causing minor spikes in activity and interest to help keep the hunt alive, even if all their leads were dead. Some dedicated players never stopped searching. The members of the Margins clan chat had no intention of giving up, and continued trying to twist and combine the maps in new ways to uncover more secrets. They tried every spot again, now with various numbers of nature runes in their inventory, hoping to strike gold. Alas, they didn't. When they failed to make progress themselves, many players reached out to the developers for more hints, hoping they'll just get enough info to crack the case. But it wasn't until November that they got something out of Mod Matt K, and even then it was only a bolder confirmation of what they had before. Now, instead of anyone can solve it, he confirmed that a new account could get the helm within 30 minutes if they knew what to do. That vastly restricted the map of possible solutions once more, knowing that high-level areas were definitely a no-go. But there were still a lot of potential places for it to be buried. A week later, discussion thrived when Wook tweeted that he had found a breakthrough, sending his followers into a joyous frenzy. Unfortunately, this didn't actually lead to anything, and he'd mistakenly bigged up on a dead end. The clue hunters may have been a fraction of the size they had been at the start, but those that remained were determined to see it through. As December rolled around, and the hunt neared the six-month mark, Slash R Crack the Clue became the tiny subreddit of the day due to its small but dedicated community. As the holiday period hit, and Matt K was no doubt enjoying some quality time away from work, the relentless begging on Twitter still refused to relent. And so, Matt K decided to drop a small hint. Whether that's due to him feeling charitable from the holiday spirit, or wanting to get people off his back for a little while is up to you. In a Twitter reply, Matt K stated that the answer to the clues would appear obvious once found. <sighs> yeah, not sure that one helps out that much. Just a few weeks later, on 15th of January 2017, Matt K dropped a much stronger hint, stating the answer lies near the lighthouse. 
Then, a few days later, another hint about having your back turned to a clock. And another week later, a hint about the desert. Progress, but I'm still not seeing how all this connects just yet. And neither did the players. Soon after, this was followed up by Mord Archie potentially giving a cryptic hint. When asked about Crack the Clue on a livestream, he appeared to think deeply for a bit, before taking a suspicious sip of his water, before continuing on. The new hints sparked another surge of activity in the community, but compared to the initial month, no actual progress was made. A few weeks later, Mod Ronan, aware of the answer, commented that he was surprised no one had found it yet. Wooks, who clearly hadn't given up yet, came up with a viable theory involving a bronze maze. But then the special thing about this is that... Um, so I'm standing right about here. If we go 10 north... And 5 west, you get exactly to this uh, bronze maze spawn. And I thought that was very interesting. Four days later, Matt K made a comment on the main old school subreddit in relation to something entirely different about a bronze axe. Which then, of course, was also assumed to be a reference towards Wooks's findings. Was it a hint? A soft confirmation? Something else? At this point, the community was desperate. They were starting to feel cheated, like the JMods were taunting them. Which hints were real, which were fake? Many clue hunters started ignoring the JMods completely, but with the new year in full swing, the lack of progress over the past few months could really be felt in the community. All sorts of players had individually poured hundreds of hours into the search, and now it felt like the devs were just laughing at them. The clue hunting community had been dedicated to the game they loved for over half a year. But now, they were getting angry. Huh? Hey guys! I found something! Really? Oh, let me what, see. Did you, what did you find? Alright, let's see. Huh? It's someone's internet history. Oh shit, is that Shanky's? Wait, don't look at that! Whoa! Dude, you're into that? <laughs> Oh god, I'm never looking you in the eye again. <laughs> <laughs> Just ignore them. God, Keep looking for the helm. Hello. <gasps> Sounds like someone should have used NordVPN. NordVPN? That's right. Just using incognito mode isn't enough to stop those sneaky unprotected connections from snooping on what you're looking at. NordVPN blocks unauthorized connections, so no one has to know what embarrassing things you look at in your spare time. Hey, look at this OnlyFans you subscribe to! Hey, Wolf's hollow. She kinda looks like your mom. <laughs> yeah. Wait, I think that is my mom. Nord also doesn't keep logs, so even we don't know what you get up to. When did you get out of that hole? Not only that, NordVPN also allows you to bypass region lock content with just a few clicks. Want to see what crazy stuff they have over on the Japanese Netflix? Hmm. I do like those Japanese cartoons. And that's not all. Why don't you try digging just a few spots to the right? Is the helm there? Even better. Go on, do it. Right over here? Let's do it. Whoa! It's the NordVPN Cyber Month deal, with the promo code RSWILL for a two-year plan with one additional month on a huge discount. That's right. Make sure not to miss it. With Will Miss It. See you around, Kenneth. My name's Shanky. <sighs> Over at Jagex headquarters, several members of the old school team are now aware of what the solution to Matt K's puzzle is. While many knew the steps to obtain the helmet, only Matt K actually knew how to combine the clues to come to that solution. In a sense, even those who knew the answers could sympathize with those struggling to solve it. The staff had started to feel guilty over how dragged out the clue hunt had become. A few of them felt bad over the fake hints from the past months. Some staff began to plead with Matt K to release more hints and appease the players. But Matt stood his ground. From the start, he had intended the hunt to take a full year to crack. To prevent leaks, he made sure that no other member of staff knew all the steps to solve the puzzle. It's hard to give hints on how to combine the maps when you don't know how to do it either. Even the code in the system came with a large note saying, this is restricted information, do not share with the players. But while Matt K was happy with the state of affairs, 
The rest of the team were getting cold feet. On 30th of March 2017, Maud Kieran commented on the state of Crack the Clue during a livestream, claiming that the hunters had been making good progress before they stopped. Maud Stone said that a lot of the hunters were getting close, according to Matt Kay, who himself stated that every part of the clue had been solved. It just needed to be put together correctly now. Matt Kay also commented in Foss livestream chat, saying that even Iron Man could complete the hunt with ease. Well, yeah, of course they could. You just had to dig in the correct spot, right? The team continued to rile up the players as April Fool's Day arrived, as anyone who dug in the wrong spot while doing a regular clue scroll had a chance of receiving a fake message saying, Congratulations, you just found the helm of Raidwald, followed by a JK colon P. The tormented hunters definitely found this very funny and not at all patronizing. So, it's not much of a surprise that, just a month later, the team started to dial back the banter. On 4th of May 2017, the team made fun of the fake hints, with Mod Archie apologizing for his fake water hint due to the number of players who took it seriously. There was one of my personal <laughs> live streams, like, yeah. I don't know, maybe a month or two ago. Somebody, they were spamming Crack the Blue, and I'm like, okay, I'll give you a hint. And I just took a sip of my water, and I was just like, there's your hint. But I wasn't actually giving a hint. And like a lot of people took it very seriously, so I feel bad. Sorry for wasting time, but... Mod Matt K even revealed that the entire hunt had been a marketing scheme to make the old school mystery a discussion topic that spread to other game communities. Now the whole point about Crack the Clue was uh, it was designed typically difficult so we could get to a stage in 12 months time or 24 months time where we could say look this thing's been in RuneScape for ages no one solved it and we can make a bit more noise about RuneScape and get more players interested in the game. The comments helped appease the players who were frustrated at the staff. In fact, it actually started to reinvigorate the Hunters. With the one-year anniversary fast approaching, the time frame that Matt Kay had intended the hunt would last for, people were hopeful of a breakthrough on the horizon. And sure enough, Matt Kay confirmed a hint would drop exactly 12 months after the final clue had been released. We got an update on Crack the Clue. Um, the update is that the hint will be given next week. Yeah, I mean, ha having seen the solution, I am surprised that it hasn't been solved because you're all just going to kick yourself so hard when you figure out the solution. Do you think somebody will end up solving it? And if so, when? I would like to see it solved by the end of today. Oh, this is a, a strong hint. That's a I good think, hint. I think if the right person approaches it in the right way, with this extra information that you'll find out in a minute, uh, <laughs> somebody could solve it very quickly. The thing about this is that every part of the clue has been solved. Um, so you've got all the answers already. What you're not doing is combining them in the right way. So the clue I'm going to give you is, in order to solve it, you need to get three specific items and dig in a specific location and then you will solve it. Three specific items and a spot to dig. Go! The next hour saw some of the highest amounts of community interest in the hunt since it had first been released. Players scattered all across the game world looking for the right spot. Many players actually tried digging at the right spot, but as they had the wrong items, they were none the wiser. One player watching the anniversary stream was someone by the name Pikachu Yip. Just your average old school player who, up until that point, hadn't really bothered with the hunt at all. When it first released, he had tried digging around the Zaya graveyard, going off the hint about Raidwald referencing a real-life king, alongside a statue that kind of looked like him. But obviously this had been to no avail and he stopped bothering. But with Matt Kay's new hint, maybe it was time to give the clue another try. One of the reasons so many players were feeling the hype of the anniversary was because so much of the groundwork had been laid out for them. Wook's finding the nature rune island with the yellow lines made it fairly clear that one of the items you needed was a nature rune. But what about the other two? Well, no other items had been hard confirmed yet, but the clues had to be on the maps. Matt K did say that everything on them had a meaning and nothing was coincidental. So what else can we find here? What about the Theta lines? Two circles on the top right, two circles on the bottom. What could that mean? Pikachu Yip proceeded to place the circles that matched in position on the clues on top of their respective dig spots, dragging the lines out, and noticed they crossed on two separate locations in the game. Maybe the two missing items would be found at both intersections. 
But the problem with this is that, given the scale of the world map, being a pixel off on the overlap could take you into a completely different chunk to the solution. Heck, maybe even several chunks. So Pikachu Yip didn't just pick up the few items found at these intersections. He picked up everything he found that was even remotely nearby. One of these lines took him to Al Karid, we'd received a desertant already, so that was likely a hit. He picked up a pair of leather boots, amongst other things. The other took him near the observatory. Maybe the lighthouse didn't mean an actual lighthouse, but the building you use to see the stars? Not so many item spawns there. But there is a single dose of super anti-poison that can be found near a dungeon entrance. He picked that up alongside anything else to be rummaged in the local area. So we've probably, hopefully, got the three items now. But where do we actually dig? Well, it turns out, the Clue Hunters might have been onto something all the way back in July 2016. What if you overlapped all the X's of the various clues, leaving just one big X between them? The idea had been abandoned at the time when people tried digging and found nothing, but no one knew about the required items at the time. Maybe the overlapped excess would be too simple of a solution. But Matt K did say nothing on the map was unintended, and the Jmods had also said the solution would be simple once you knew it. So Pikachu Yip combined the excess and found himself just outside Ardoin Monastery, with his back to the nearby clock tower. This was starting to look promising. He tried digging and... nothing. <laughs> How anticlimactic. Well, he had swooped in at the 11th hour. It would be kinda silly to expect that he'd solve it after a year of failed attempts from the most dedicated players. Maybe it was time to... Wait, hang on. What about 10 and 5W? It couldn't be that simple, right? So Pikachu Yip walked 10 spaces north, 5 spaces west, and dig. Nothing. Hmm. Maybe it was time to go back to the drawing board. The intersecting theta lines were an inspired idea, but maybe he'd brought the wrong items. Maybe he had been several chunks off, or the thetas were actually just a red herring. Or maybe it was the excess? Well, if you're here anyway, might as well dig around a few spaces just to be safe. You never know what you might find a buried. What the? A year of hints. A year of red herrings. A year of hundreds of players pouring their sweat and tears into thousands of combined hours. And in just two days, Pikachu Yip had unearthed the relic that everyone had been searching for. Even he wasn't sure what the exact solution was among the tens of items in his packed inventory. But that didn't matter. For the first time in old school history, a player gazed down at the helm of Raidwald. He had cracked the clue. Immediately after finding it, he wasted no time in joining the Margins clan chat to announce that he had found it, only to be immediately kicked for lying about it and winding up the Clue Hunters. He also went into Bodhi's livestream to spread the news, but was also ignored there. Well, since no one was believing him by his word, it was time to show off some proof. Pikachu Yip made a YouTube video announcing the find, showing it off and uploaded it the following day, on July 18th. He also followed up with a Reddit post saying the hunt was far from over because he was not going to reveal the solution. The comments started rolling in. The old school team were quick to debunk any theories about the discovery being faked. No, it wasn't photoshopped. It wasn't filmed on a private server. It was the real deal. But the community of Clue Hunters were anything but happy for the achievement. Disappointed and in disbelief, many people wanted to tear down Pikachu Yip for finding it first. I mean, he'd basically cheated. He'd brute forced the solution by bringing so many items rather than figuring it out exactly. Yeah, he didn't even get the dig spot right. He had to try digging around. What a fake solution. Hell, he was only riding off the cocktails of other people's hard work. He'd never have found it without everything the subreddit did. How dare he leech off the hard work they put together over the past 12 months. And now he's disrespecting the longtime hunters by not sharing the solution? I tell ya, what a guy. Others claimed that him withholding the solution was a publicity stunt to gain fame and followers for his Twitch channel. He even turned down offers of up to a billion coins from the wealthiest of players who wanted to buy the solution from him. Although, to say it was all hate would be disingenuous. Many players who had sunk their lives into Crack the Clue were going through all the stages of grief, for sure. 
But between this salt and anger, many players were congratulating Pikachu Yip for managing to put it all together, and also for keeping the hunt alive by keeping the solution a secret. Over at Jagex headquarters, Mod Matt K is extremely relieved, as he feared that the hunt would have done more harm than good if it went on for much longer. Pikachu Yip stayed true to his intentions and kept the secret for as long as he could. Honestly, he just wanted to spend some time being the only player in-game with such a rare item before everyone knew how to get it. But the pressure to reveal was high. Striking a middle ground, he spent the next few days in the livestream chat for Fa, occasionally revealing hints over time to aid the search. And on 20th of July 2017, Tika Taka 2 became the first player to combine Pikachu Yip's clues with the official ones, and became the second owner of the Helm of Raidwald. And from there, the floodgates opened. Overlap the Thedas and use the yellow lines to find a nature room. Intersect the Theta lines to find the super anti-poison by the observatory and the leather boots in Al Karid. Overlap the excess to find yourself at the monastery, and overlap the maps and align the boxes to get 10 and 5 W. Dig with those three items and you got your helmet. Everyone in the community knew that now, or just the solution at least. Only the diehard clue hunters really cared about the logic of how to solve it. And over time, that information became the background trivia to the bring these items and dig here you see on guides and the wiki. Crack the Clue had fostered a strong community in old school. In the months following its conclusion, several player-made hunts were held on slash r Crack the Clue, as a way to entertain each other and keep the Clue Hunter community alive. In 2019, Jagex announced a second Crack the Clue, bringing out a new set of clues to be solved. Once more, the Clue Hunting community spiked in popularity, with players like Wooks and Pikachu Yip leading the charge into new territory. However, with everyone now better prepared on what to expect from the solution, Crack the Clue 2's final clue was solved in just 5 days, which is just a little bit faster than the year it had taken for Crack the Clue 1. Creators like Boti wanted a repeat where the solution was kept secret, but this time it was all over Reddit within minutes. A third version of the event was designed at Jagex, but this one was by a different developer, as Matt K left the company in May 2019. Crack the Clue 3 was intended to be more tied to the game mechanics, involving the player to receive super rare drops, but this was eventually cancelled and never saw the light of day. Matt K may no longer be with the Jagex, but the impact he left on the community cannot be understated. Despite all the frustration and tears, Crack the Clue has left a huge mark on the community, one that was more positive than not. Maybe a true Crack the Clue 3 is just around the corner. Or maybe there's one in-game now, and we just don't know about it. Yet. Thank you all so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this look through Crack the Clue and how it developed during its run. It was definitely a wild ride, and I can't help but feel nostalgic when hearing about it, even though I wasn't personally involved with it. When interviewing sources for this video, I couldn't help but smile at how fun and energetic they all were when talking about this event so many years after it happened. It really shows that, despite the roller coaster of emotions that it was at the time, it's given a lot of people some really good memories. Until next time, my name is Will Missit and I'll see you all later.